Well, tonight was the first time Americans really heard publicly and directly from Trump since that assassination attempt on Saturday. And political reporter Jack Fink joining us now here in studio. What did he say about that, Jack? Well, Ken and Nicole, former President Donald Trump said he would only talk about his very public near-death experience once because it was too painful to tell. He thanked the Secret Service members who jumped on him to protect him and said God was on his side. Trump said while on the ground, he could see how concerned his supporters were, which led to a moment many of them have said they will never forget. I wanted to do something to let him know I was okay. I raised my right arm, looked at the thousands and thousands of people that were breathlessly waiting and started shouting, fight, fight, fight. Trump paid tribute to Corey Comparatore, the former fire chief who was killed at his rally while trying to shield his wife and daughter. His helmet and uniform were on display on stage. Trump announced they've raised more than $6 million for his family and for the two other victims who were seriously injured. The former president said he rewrote parts of his speech after the assassination attempt with the goal of uniting the country. The discord and division in our society must be healed. We must heal it quickly. As Americans, we are bound together by a single fate and a shared destiny. We rise together or we fall apart. I am running to be president for all of America, not half of America, because there is no victory in winning for half of America. The former president also pledged to secure the southern border again, and he also discussed inflation, which climbed to record levels in 2022, but prices have not risen by nearly as much recently. I will end the devastating inflation crisis immediately, bring down interest rates, and lower the cost of energy. We will drill, baby, drill. We should note a president cannot lower interest rates. The Federal Reserve does that. Trump's wife, former First Lady Melania Trump, appeared at the convention for the first time tonight. She hasn't been seen publicly in a while because she does not regularly appear with Trump when he's on the campaign trail. The Biden-Harris campaign said that Trump is only out there to benefit the rich. Tonight's 90-minute long speech comes as the polls, both nationally and in the key battleground states, continue to move toward Trump's direction. To win the White House, a candidate needs 270 electoral college votes. As a result of the real clear politics average of polls today, the Trump-Vance campaign marked by the red states would reach 268. Because aside from the solid red states, they lead in states such as Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia, which he lost four years ago. The Biden-Harris campaign marked by the blue states would have 226 electoral college votes based on today's average of polls. According to the Cook Political Report right now, there are only three battleground states, and they are Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, worth 44 electoral college votes. The Biden-Harris campaign won those states four years ago and calls them their blue wall and their clearest path to victory. If Trump holds on to the other states, he would need only one of these three states to win the White House. There's also another state that Democrats have traditionally won that is now in play, Virginia. The Real Clear Politics average of polls shows Trump just moved ahead of President Biden for the first time, albeit barely, by nearly half a percentage point. And to show you how important the state of Michigan is, former President Trump and Senator Vance will hold their first rally together on Saturday in Grand Rapids. The event is being held indoors.